Hello YouTube, this is Charlie426 and today we have the review of the Master Grade Hyakushiki 2.0. Now this is not my first time actually trying out the Master Grade Hyakushiki 2.0. For those who has been in my channel for a long time, those might remember that uh, I have reviewed the Premium Bandai Exclusive Master Grade Hyakushiki Kai Mass Production Type uh, which you see on the right side over here a long time ago that was like really one of my I think it might be my first premium Bandai kit review in this channel but I don't know I have like kind of made a few old videos private because like every once in every three to four months I, I would get like a very very annoying comment from one of those videos but still uh, so this is my second time trying out the Master Grade Hyakushiki 2.0 inner frame and it was very fun to try out so yeah um for those who don't know, Hyakushiki is actually one of my personal favorite mobile suits out there. Um, not because of the gold color, it's just like the concept of the mobile suit I am a very big fan of. Okay, so let's get on to the review. So, uh, I won't be doing any comparisons with the Hyakushiki uh, Kai Mass production type over there. I just wanted to mention that uh, this is my second try out on the 2.0 frame for the Hyakushiki. But I will be making some 1.0 comparisons because some people... Uh, do have like sometimes they have a hard time choosing whether to go with the 1.0 or 2.0 because I personally think they each have their own pros and cons so yeah okay so let's go over com uh, components so first of all what you get of course is obviously the mold suit itself and then your hands you get only one set of hands which is the finger the master grade type hands where it has each uh, individually articulated fingers uh, and then the hole and peg system for the hands of course this one is works a little bit differently but still this the main idea is to use the hole and peg system uh, equipment wise there's not much you get a clay bazooka and it's been done very nice and you can uh, fold you can take out the handle and then as I mentioned the holding peg system there's these pegs that you can fold in and out there's one even on the hand so what you do is you you unfold the, po the peg and then there's a hole so the the peg that's on the hand goes into there and then this peg goes onto the uh, hole on the hand so it gives a, a very firm grip or at least um, the weapon won't fall out on its own and then here we have the hook, yeah the bazooka, I don't think the hook is meant to actually uh, fold up, it's actually just there. And you can steer, store in the handle, and we can also take out the ammo pack or clip, and you can see even extra red details in there for the ammo. And it has been done very nice, because what one of the main differences is that like from an HG to a Master Grade, they give in more color details and other small details into the weapons as well. While HGs, they just usually just slap in two, two of the same color, uh, same color and then make it into a whole single color, but yeah. Um, of course, I've ha I have tried the Hakushiki Revive and that is also one amazing kit, so do try it out as well. So here we have the beam rifle. Uh, one, uh, I believe the DJ uses the same beam rifle if I remember correctly. Uh, nothing too special. Once again, we have the same handle with the same peg system going on here. I believe this is supposed to be the ammo pack, but I believe this one is not meant to actually come out that easily. And we have some extra uh, detail. We have the pipelines, some color separations, and then we I believe there's supposed to be a clear piece that goes in here, and then you put a clear uh, a, a green metallic sticker on top of it. So there we go. And there's also a hook here, but the way how you're supposed to take off the hook is that you have to push the handle forward, and then this part pops out. Then you can pull it out to reveal the hook. And then once you have it on the back, you can fold up, fold in the handle like that. So yeah, pretty good detail and gimmick. And then we get two beam saber effect parts, and obviously the two beam saber hilts on are on the back skirt armor, as you can see. And then here we have some extra, well not extra, but here we have an action base connector. Here we have the pilot figurine of Quattro Bagina. And then, let's see, here we have the sticker sheet. Uh, yeah, I did use all of the stickers. I will try to point out where the stickers are supposed to go, but yeah, they're usually your typical... Uh, area of sticker so we have the eyes so this one this kit actually provides uh, like three options uh, for the eyes but yeah it really depends on what you want to use okay so here we have three different eyes here number one should be like the the red eyes like a Gundam type red eyes uh, number two should be the black eyes like the typical Hyakushiki where it's always like wearing black sunglasses this one is the like the booting up mode like if you've seen the anime I believe this was I'm not sure if it was presented in Delta Plus Master Grade, but if you see the anime in uh, in and or in Unicorn or the Delta Plus was trying to activate I believe they have a brief moment of this uh, eye scene and then here we have the cameras I believe this is the head cameras this one goes for the weapon these eight ones goes onto the wing wings so yeah 
here we have some uh, dry decal sheets. Actually, it's been a long time since I've seen these for, for some reason. So we have the Hakushiki, the, the number 100 in kanji right over here. And then I believe this is the Delta symbol. We have the Eugo symbols all over the place. So yeah. And then here we have the sticker decal sheets, which is like one of those composed of like warning symbols of red, small details. And here we have some leftover pieces. So as you can see, we have another Quattro Bajina. This is just due to a double plate. So we get two of the same pilots as well. Same goes for the pilot seat. Of course, the one that you only have one leftover because the, the other one is already in the mold suit. Uh, and once again, I don't think this is intended, but basically a double plate. So we get an extra antenna, which I'm actually happy because the antenna for this kit is the most fragile part, if you ask me. It's always good to have an extra leftover part. Here we have the ammo clip slash the ammo that goes into the bazooka. Uh, ammo clip, very nice, nothing too special. Here we have some, well these are technically, I wouldn't say leftover piece, but if you want to use the balut system from the Hakushiki balut system set, or if you purchase the Premium Bandai exclusive uh, balut system, that can be attached to uh, the, I think the Rick Diaz, the Marasai, the Nemo, and the Hakushiki. Uh, this is what you used for the 2.0, because I believe the parts aren't 100% compatible. And then here we have some two more pieces. Now these are the eye pieces I was talking about. So you have a choice whether to use the sunglass types or the, the booting up types. So these are actually uh, more indicated. So you can see the extra lines over there. So if you want to have the eyes on the booting one or the actual like Gundam eye-ish eyes, this is the ones that you, you use. And they're also molded. So they also have these engravings. So if you want to color them yourself, that's the way to go. But for me, the Hakushiki will always be the one with the black eyes. Alright, so let's get on to the review. So let me get it off the stand and turn off the stand because this thing is actually pretty noisy than you think. Okay, so and let's get rid of the other one. So yeah. So before articulation, let's go over the like comparisons really quick. So the left one you see is the 1.0 version, and here the right one is the 2.0 version. So right off the bat, obviously, other than the obvious color, the 1.0 is actually chrome gold, while the 2.0 is more of an HD gold and uh, it really depends on what you prefer. Honestly, I say both looks amazing. Of course, uh, Chrome would have the issue of like uh, fingerprints and dust getting on pretty fast, and you can see it pretty, pretty you know, obviously. But still, other and then other than the articulation stuff, there's going to be changes here and there, and uh, you can see the proportion has been changed a lot. You can see the body is less, is more thinner on the 2.0 version as well. I think overall, like the shoulders, the arms are much more thinner. Even the legs should be much more skinnier for the 2.0. And one thing I, b I believe is very different is that, so if you look at the backpack, you can see on the 2.0 right over here, the pipes are still on the backpack. While the 1.0 is that these cables are actually now connecting to the body. So that's one big difference because I believe if you buy the Robot Damashi version, uh, yeah, the cables are also connected to the body. So yeah. Alright, so let's get over articulation. So, it's been a long time since I reviewed the Hakushiki Kai mass production type, so obviously I'm going to do make this video as pretty much a new review. Okay, so let's start over the head. So, the head, um, obviously as I mentioned, the eyes are the black stickers, and here we have one head camera, and then there should be another one on the back, so that's the head cameras over there. Uh, and regarding the eyes, what you can do is you can take off the top section of the part, and then you can replace those clear plastics uh, to the... To the one you want to use so it's easy to interchange of course but the odd part is that uh, when you're building this and if you follow the manual they tell you to uh, apply the red Gundam eye stickers inside so not on the clear part but there's another part on the inside they, they tell you to apply that there and then apply the sticker here I'm not really sure why that is the case because if you don't use that then obviously the eye the the head eye location will be a bit off but yeah so if you don't if you want to use all three eyes or you utilize all three of them don't apply the sticker on the inside the same so head articulation is pretty well done it can go down that much that's actually a lot it can go up that much once again a lot and then 360 twist uh, I say not really possible or you're gonna have to work your way around so these are it's not really meant to but I can definitely say or tell that it was it's not really meant to go 360 and of course the uh, the gold armor is actually colliding here and there so yeah I should also mention that the the, the gold armor the gold color plates you see are all undergated so keep that in mind 
Uh, so, and the body has a very nice movement, so it can go to the side, left and right like that. It has some movement right over there, and then it has a nice ab crunch going on here. Very nice. Um, so we have the cockpit here. It's not easy to open the cockpit, so what you're supposed to do is you have to open these sections sideways, and then you're supposed to be able to open the cockpit like here. But once again, these are one of those cockpits that are very difficult to open because they're just really hard to reach in, and then, there we go. So yeah, we can reveal the cockpit and then reveal the pile over there. And if you don't want to, just close it up and then close the side panels, uh, push them inside. And there you go. Mine could be a little bit wobbly because they were too stiff, so I did kind of sand them down. And I feel like they're not wobbly. Okay, so now let's go over the shoulders. The shoulders are very good. Uh, these are probably one of the best shoulder articulations I've seen. Um, so it does have your typical forward and backward movement like this. It can pull out a lot in a big big ball joint looking thing kind of comes out and then also can go to this oh, the shoulders and the arm are separate pieces so keep that in mind you can go to the side about 90 degrees um, uh, yeah 90 degrees and you can also pull out one more time like that so you do have a, a good range of movement on the arms uh, the arm is able to go 360 on its own but of course just be careful about of the wings on the backside because they will collide together uh, and then the arm itself does have a 360 twist on its own like that. And then you have a nice, beautiful double jointed bend going on here. And your typical ball jointed hand. And we have some extra details right over the hand where uh, if you've seen the anime, the Hakushiki does fire like either uh, these clay-ish uh, materials or sometimes like a fake balloon rocks from there. So yeah. Okay, now let's get the backpack just for a short while. So the backpack is definitely one of the main changes compared to the 1.0. Just to mention... The 1.0 is pretty much a ball joint connection right over here to the backpack, and that's pretty much it. While the 2.0 allows it for more articulation, so you have this a lot more movement going on here. You can twist the wings, so you can pretty much position them anywhere you you want to do so. And the thrusters do move a little bit up and down, a little bit. And then uh, since we're on the back, I'll also mention that on the back skirt we have the the beams to air storage units. Uh, uh, of course, like on the on the manual, if I didn't misread it, they tell you that it can go up and down, but I, I'm, oh, there we go, it can go up and down like that. Although I'm not sure if this is like a very important gimmick, to be honest. And then the beam savers just clip on, uh, to the, on to the holster, and then the beam savers also have that hold and peg system going on there. And the wings itself do fold as well, so no need to worry about that. And then for those who are wondering where the back weapons are supposed to connect is that there's a small uh, clipping area right over here. So this is where the hooks just clip in. It doesn't matter which uh, left or right, it's just meant for those weapons. Okay. Now let's look at the waist section. The waist section is pretty also well done. Uh, the front skirts are separate pieces and they can move forward a lot. And then the side skirt also can move a lot, and the back skirt also moves, but uh, together, not separately. Okay, let's see. And then, as you can see, uh, due to the connection point here, we have a nice side swivel going on here. It can go forward 90 degrees, or a little bit more, depending on how you do it. And then backwards, I can't say 90 degrees, or technically not with the back skirt armor, but you can definitely go more if it, if it weren't for the back skirt armor. And then can go to the side that like that. And also, this also has one of those master grade gimmicks where you can pull out and then re, uh, reposition the leg uh, or leg position right over there. There we go. And then, oh yeah, we should also show you guys the bend. The bend has been done very well like that. And if you look at the manual, this the legs. These legs are also able to do these Zeta Gundam type legs where, uh, to fold in where they do the way when it's transforming into Wave Rider. Because for those who don't know, the Hakushiki. Uh, originally, they were trying to make a transforming mostly like the Zeta Gundam, and uh, they couldn't get it to work. So that's instead they scrapped the transforming idea and made the Hakushiki. So the completed version of the Hakushiki is called the Delta Gundam. And yeah, a lot of people like me are still waiting for that mobile suit. Of course, I uh, I do hope the transformation would be much more sturdier because the Delta Plus. I mean, it was okay, but still, I felt like something was, you know, not enough. Okay, back to the. The feet are also pretty well done. Uh, they're, the main connection is a peck, but uh, there's no ball joint, but still has great movement. We have a nice toe bend. You can go forward that much, backward that much, and we have a nice uh, piston action going on here. And we have a nice pivot. 
Okay, so we've seen the basics of the uh, mobile suit. Now I'll be right back with the equipment to explain to you guys like how the connection works one more time. So I'll be right back. Okay, here we have the first set of poses uh, and equipment uh, details. So first of all, on the right hand, I gave it the beam rifle. On the left hand, I gave it the beam saber. And on the backpack is the clay bazooka. So once again, uh, I'll, I wanted to mention a few things. So number one, you can put it on the action base. But in order to put it on the action base, you need to have that action base connector clipped on to the crotch, or, well, the opposite of the crotch area. So yeah. And number two is the way the how the weapon connect works. So it works pretty well uh, on like beam rifles or clay bazookas. Um, now some may claim that it's not really perfect, and I can totally understand that because even right now it's using the double hole peg system, and the weapon might be a little bit wobbly, but not that bad. And the way how this is supposed to connect, that you can see there's no gap right there. But the way how this works is that you can see there is a right over here. There's a peg that usually it will be fold up inside the hand like that and there we go and same goes for the weapon handle so you can see there so when you open them up there's a hole that reveals there so you have to plug each peg into the each other's hole over there like that and that sounded a little bit wrong but that's just the way how it is so yeah and then so as I mentioned this is no big problem with weapons like uh, beam rifles and bazookas because you're pretty much there's only one way to hold a gun but when it comes to beam savers this may be a little bit lacking because it's same it, it's the same way how you do it with the beam saber so if you're holding it up upwards it's no problem uh, now the hakushiki might feel a little bit back heavy the same goes for I don't know why I think it could be the backpack itself is a little bit heavy compared to the mobile suit but still and as you can see the hole is on on the lower end and you can see on the hand the peg is on the lower end as well so if you want to hold the beam saber upside down, there's no really way to do it unless uh, you have to take off one of the pegs and then just just plug it in. So that's the only way you can do it if you want to hold it. Whoa, boy! Sorry about that. If you want to hold the beam sabers uh, upside down, so that's kind of one down, one downside. But I say it's still workable if you know what to do. Okay, so I'll be right back with the last set of equipment. So I'll be right back. Okay, here we have the last set of equipment, or pretty much the same, uh, but instead of the beam rifle, I gave it the clay bazooka, basically on a firing position. Nothing too special, it's pretty much the same way how you connect the weapon to the hand, so nothing too different. Now, I forgot, almost forgot to mention like those eight black stickers where they're supposed to go. So on the end of the wing tips, you can see these black stickers over there, so those are where the eight black stickers go. So you have to put uh, the, the one on the top and the, on, the, on the bottom are different sizes, so there's for each since you have to put there's two wings and then you have to put it on each side so those are where the stickers go and that's pretty much it for the review so definitely I love this kit uh, not only because it's a it's a personal favorite mold suit but the quality is superb there has been a lot of changes compared to the 1.0 version so if those who love the Hakushiki and those who enjoy the 1.0 version I'm pretty sure you can you will enjoy the 2.0 version as well and when it comes to the, which is the better option obviously I'm gonna say well when it comes when it comes to quality and everything, to the 2.0 will be obviously the the better option. But still, for those who are curious on the 1.0 version, it's also a very good mo uh, a very good master grade out there. So once again, it's your choice, and it's it doesn't hurt to try out older older kits as well because some kits they're still worthy of trying. Anyway, thank you for watching the review. This was the review of the Master Grade Hakushiki 2.0. For those who guys who have any questions or requests, leave a comment below. I still have more stuff to buy and build and make reviews out of, so please stay tuned. Until then, see you guys next time.